Fernanda, Kroizui Kavarvad, Diaki Higid Amdod. Good afternoon. Welcome to today's full council meeting of Wednesday, 11th of January 2023. Agenda item number one Democratic services. Have we, have we had any apologies for absence? Thank you. Agenda item number two. Oh, Michelle. Council Mitten's running a bit late as well, so but she will be here tonight. Thank you, Councillor Thomas. Councillor. Um, apologies from uh, Councillor Jeremy Davis as well. Thank you, everyone. Um, agenda item number two declarations of interest. Members are reminded of their personal responsibility to declare any personal and prejudicial interest in respect of matters contained to the, in this agenda in accordance with the provisions of the Local Government and Finance Act 1992 relating to council tax, the Local Government Act 2000, the Council's Constitution and the Members' Code of Conduct. Are there any members who wish to make a declaration of interest for any of the agenda items being discussed today? No one indicating. As for Clive Jones. Mayor, yeah, I'll stand up. At this stage, can I move suspension of standing orders so that the information report on the housing support grant 23-24 update is brought on to the agenda tonight? I understand item five on the constitution is going to be recommended for deferment later on. So if that is agreed, I can I suggest that item 12 be brought onto the agenda to replace item 5. In moving standing orders, it will give members an opportunity of asking questions and making comments on item 12 in an open public meeting, which they cannot do so as it is an information report. Uh, yeah, can, can I answer that, Councillor Jones? Um, this uh, this particular item is going to scrutiny next week. Um, so if the if there is a request to uh, deal with this matter in any other way, can it please be done after scrutiny? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me. Um, no, I I happen to be a, a member of that particular scrutiny committee, and it, and the the chair of that committee has agreed for this item to be on there, which is fine. But the, we have a report here tonight, which is an information report in going into some detail, um, making some, uh, well, it appears that decisions have been made on a, on a great deal of money. And as far as we are concerned in the Labour Group, this particular report tonight should be brought onto the agenda to give members an opportunity of asking questions in a full council. Um, from an officer's perspective, I disagree with you. Um, it's a, uh, it's um, it was a technical, uh, a technical decision made against the technical criteria. We're happy to discuss it. Uh, we're happy to take it as scrutiny. We're happy to continue that discussion, uh, but I don't think it's appropriate. Mr. Mayor, I have moved suspension of standing orders. I would need to advise everybody that, in fact, even if you were to suspend standing orders, what you have is an information report. It is providing you with information. It is not a matter to be debated because it's not a matter where you can make a decision. It is simply to give you information. You've been told about the route that you can go down where the, the matter can be challenged and can be considered, uh, and that is that it would be through scrutiny. And then if there are any decisions that need to be made in due course, then they can be made at a subsequent meeting. But for today, what you have is simply information. I understand, Mr Mayor, what the monitor officers just said. But I reiterate, there are there is a, a detailed report there 
And if this is accepted tonight, it will give members from the whole council an opportunity of asking discussion, asking questions or taking part in comments afterwards. For the third time, I move suspension of standing orders. Can I suggest, Mondon officer, um, that um, as I said previously, we're happy, we're happy to have the debate. We're happy to have an ongoing dialogue, um, but obviously it's going to scrutiny. Can I offer to bring it back to the next council so that it's in it's in due logical order? So, so that's what uh, Alan Owen has suggested too. I'm looking at the next date for the uh, full council. <clears throat> yeah. we, we have got a, a full council next week, but that's a special full council. Are you happy to bring it back on the 8th of February, uh, Councillor Clive Jones, Councillor Darren Roberts? Yes, we would accept that, but it would have to be a committee report. And not an information report yeah. with recommendations. Yeah, can we uh, can we discuss that separately as well out, uh, outside this meeting? I think what I, what uh, Alan Owen wants is to get guidance on exactly what you want, maybe what what recommendations you you you're looking for, and and, and that sort of thing. We can have the discussion, but. We'd be quite happy, but it's got to be a committee report. And we, fr quite frankly, what we are asking for is for this to be brought into the um, dis budget discussions um, and there as well, because we've got meetings later on this month. But as far as we're concerned, um, it, it, it must be on the agenda of the council meeting. <coughs> Yeah, to be, I, I don't see anything wrong with that, personally. Councillor Darren Roberts. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Yeah, thank you, Mr Mayor. Happy for that to happen. You know, happy for the debate to, to take place at the next uh, council, full council meeting uh, as a full uh, agenda item, where obviously this would have gone through scrutiny as well then, so we can obviously take into consideration the points of view from the relevant scrutiny committee. So. Happy for that, um, Alan and Mr. Mayor. OK, lovely. Thank you very much both. Um, just go back to declarations of interest. Did anyone have any declarations of interest? No one has indicated, so we'll go on. Um, agenda item number three to approve as accurate the minutes of previous meetings, which covers reports 3A to 3G, which are as follows. Full Council of 7th of December 2022, Cabinet of 7th of December 2022, Planning, Regulatory and Licensing of 14th of December 2022, Licensing Committee of 2nd of December 2022, Corporate Support and Resources Scrutiny Committee of 20th of December 2022, Learning and Local Government Education Service Scrutiny Committee of 5th of December 2022, Neighbourhood Services Countryside and Planning Scrutiny Committee of 7th of November 2022. Um, I believe the Council Leader Gary Thomas will be moving this report. Yeah. Thank you, Councillor Thomas. Um, do we have a seconder for this agenda item? Happy to second, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Andrew Barry. Has any member got anything to raise in relation to the minutes? OK, no one's indicating. Can we put this to the vote then, please, Monitor? Thank you, monitoring officer. 
Um, agenda item number four, revenue budget 2023-2024, the considered the report of the chief executive. Um, the cabinet member for governance and resources, Councillor Andrew Barry, will, pre will be presenting and moving this report. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Revenue budget 23-24. Uh, first of all, I uh, just want to point out that all the recommendations here are for noting. There are no decisions to be made off the back of this report. This is just an exercise in bringing members up to speed uh, with the current financial position as at the date of this report, 11th of January, as outlined by officers. A provisional Welsh Government settlement, uh, from which we get approximately 70% of our income, was announced on the 14th of December last year. That gave us a funding increase of 7% or an additional 7.9 uh, 7 million. Were we to have had just uh, the Welsh average at 7.9%, we would have realised approximately £1 million extra, or the equivalent of 4% non-council tax income for 23-24. We were 18th out of 22 Welsh councils and keep company with Blaine I Gwent, Rhonda, uh, Canon Taff, Caffili, and us. Blaine I Gwent uh, have the highest council tax rates in Wales and some of the highest levels of deprivation. Much like ourselves in Merthyr Tydfil, we hold the unenviable position of being next in the highest council tax table next to Blaine I Gwent. Why do I point that out, Mr Mayor? Because you've ever wanted proof that the Welsh Labour government have turned its back on the valleys and its working classes, here it is in black and white. The bottom of the settlement table with the affluent Monmouth, Cardiff and Vale Glamorgan topping the table with the very best settlements, as you can see in Appendix 1. That increased but poor settlement from a pan Wales perspective, has set the tone for this revenue budget report because that's just about as good as it gets. <clears throat> Appendix 2 gives you the reason for the settlement as it stands drawn from our key data sets, but it is within Welsh Labour government's power to change that mechanism as it is to change to a fairer council tax system but with both vital financial lifelines to the people of South Wales Valleys, nothing has changed. So we find ourselves back having to overcome massive financial deficits. The revised budget deficit for 23-24 is now over £11 million, broken down to table one on page 74 of your papers. Steve further breaks down the figure throughout the report, section three, gives the rationale to that figure, highlighting rising energy costs, the situation in, U in Ukraine, Brexit, and the inflationary impact of sectors reopening following COVID lockdowns. The UK is currently experiencing a recession and expect to be in recession uh, to last, expect the recession to last until the end of 2023. These are the pressures we and every other authority in the UK are experiencing. In essence, the Conservatives have thrown the economy off a cliff and Labour have shown through their settlement they have very little thought for the people of Merthyr Tidbill, so it is left to this administration and the officers of this authority is sorted out. The settlement is dealt with in section five, giving further details of key pressures. Appendix three deals with that impact on the medium term financial plan with appendix four pages 82 to 85 of your papers, giving a comprehensive list of additional demands by descriptions of financial implication over the medium term financial plan. The report covers with Appendix 5, a comprehensive breakdown of the real living wage issues for care workers, an uplift they so richly deserve. The report concludes with an analysis of the inflationary pressures we have at present uh, at Appendix 6. I have to stress, this is the worst case scenario as it stands. And we will now, as members of Merth Tidbill County Borough Council, have to mitigate all we can to give the people of Merthyr the best outcome from this very dire position. The recommendations stand at 2.1 to 2.5. 2.1, the implications of the provisional local government settlement for 2023-24, outlined in section five and appendices one and three are noted. 2.2, the net additional demands outlined in section five and appendix four be noted. 
the real living wage for care workers, additional costs outlined in section five and appendix five be noted. 2.4, the inflationary impact as outlined at section five and appendix six be noted. 2.5, the revised budget deficit of 11.035 million for 23-24 be noted. I move, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Andrew Barry. Do we have a second for this agenda item? Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Thomas. Um, any questions from members? Councillor Clive Jones. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, my question is on page 46. It's number 18 on that page and refers to the St Tidwell Shopping Centre and I quote, it relates to a loss of rental income together with increased business rates, liabilities and landlord costs, 312,000. Can I ask uh, when the shopping centre was purchased by the local authority, uh, was that loss of rental income anticipated? Uh, no, it wasn't, Councillor Jones, because when the uh, when the centre was uh, was purchased, um, it was run at uh, at a healthy deficit. But obviously, uh, since it's been purchased, then we've had the the massive upheaval in the economy, which has obviously hit retail um, very uh, very hard. So, Mr. Mayor, are steps being taken by the council and officers? to ensure that that figure, which is anticipated by the sound of it, it's going to happen, is not going to get any bigger? That is correct, Councillor Jones. Uh, there are several initiatives um, uh, and additional marketing which we're currently engaged in. OK, thank you. Dave, is that it? Yeah. Lovely, thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Anna Williams-Price. Thank you. Can I ask the Cabinet Member for Resources, what is his current assessment of the role of decarbonisation in protecting the authority against further inflationary pressures driven by fossil fuel use? Repeat the question. <laughs> um, what is your current assessment of the role of decarbonisation in protecting the authority against further inflationary pressures driven by fossil fuel use? Um, decarbonisation itself is not going to save this authority. It's a contributory factor. Um, inflationary pressures um, standing at the moment 10.7 percent those inflationary pressures stand from the figure in november that's not december's figure it's not january's figure the figures as outlined by the obr for the next 24 months see under the uh the, the cpi the consumer price index dropping to 6.8 percent uh in 24 months they drop to a negative figure of 0.1 percent then in 2025 they drop to minus 3.8 percent we've got 12 months of recession to deal with now there are many things that we've got to look at decarbonization is not going to dig us out of this hole there are other things that we have to look at 11.3 percent uh, sorry 11.3 million pounds um decarbonisation is not going to scratch the surface, if I'm honest. Um, we have initiatives. Um, there are major areas that we need to look at. There are, there are huge changes that have to come to this authority. Decarbonisation will be part of it. We are promised by those who are immersed in decarbonisation that it will make savings. The savings need to be made now not over a five or 10 year period. So decarbonisation is not going to solve the problem on its own. Finish, miss. Yep, lovely. Uh, Councillor Gareth Lewis. May I a question for the cabinet member responsible for governance and finance. Uh, can you 
tell members what representations have been made to Welsh Government and UK Government in respect of increasing um, the settlement uh, specifically for Merthyr Tydfil. Thank you, Gareth. We, we've been lobbying through the WLGA for pro approximately 12 months now. Um, we've lobbied hard on council tax and we see nothing. We've lobbied hard on that mechanism um, because the mechanism is predicated by the fact that the higher the settlement, the better the settlement for those more affluent areas. That's not good enough. Merthyr, Blaen I Gwent and the Valleys areas are some of the most deprived areas in Wales. And to see Welsh Labour government at a time such as this in, and the word is used a lot, unprecedented times, we have £11 million to overcome here. Cardiff has, has achieved an additional £49 million. Of course, we've been lobbying on the issue. We've lobbied hard on the issue. Nothing, same as council tax, has happened. In Councillor Barry, is what specific representations the Merthyr Tidville County Borough Council has made to Welsh Government and perhaps more importantly, UK Government. So can you explain what correspondence you've had with Welsh Government and UK Government with regards to this matter? Specifically, we've had access to Rebecca Evans, um, the Finance Minister, uh, on many occasions. And um, we continually speak to her about it. Very non-committal. Um, obviously, the settlement is the settlement. The result is the same as it always is when a high settlement comes. We saw it last year. We've seen it this year. We lose out. We slip down the table. Just not good enough, Gareth. Not good enough. Now, our representation is directly to the finance minister. We couldn't do better than that, could we? Clarity. Any recommendations to UK government, please, under uh, Councillor Barry? Surely the representations to the UK government um, are the bag of the Welsh government. We don't get our money from the revenue through Welsh government, through central government. We get it through Welsh government. It is their decision how much we get. So it would be pointless us going to the ministers in Westminster when our money is decided in Cardiff. Councillor Darren Roberts. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Barry referenced that seventy percent of uh, the budget that we receive is from Welsh government. I think approximately, and Steve may know the figure on this, approximately eighty percent of the money that Welsh government gets is actually from the UK government in, in Westminster. So everything's relevant. Um, question for Alan, um, please, Al. Um, the St David's Shopping Centre. Um, but obviously we we purchased that. How did we um, finance it or where did the money come from for that, please? We looked at two options um, when the property became available. Um, the, we looked at um, purchasing um, through Bordwin, uh, but we also were in negotiations with Welsh Government in relation to the regeneration programme transforming towns. Uh, we were encouraged to put the funding application into Welsh Government um, the application was successful and we achieved a 100% grant. So just for clarity, Welsh Government financed 100% of the grant application for St David Shopping Centre, which is now an asset for Merthyr Council. Correct. Thank you. Councillor Brent Carter. I want to come into that, uh, Councillor David Hughes. On that point. Shop said that we bought that, uh, not St. David's. If we bought St. David's, we well off. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That's a break, Carter. <coughs> Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Just a quick question to the cabinet member, Councillor Barry. Uh, Councillor Barry, could you give me a, a breakdown of how the local government settlements are worked out, please? Absolutely. It's within the report. It's within the report, Councillor Carter. I refer you to and it bear with me. Okay. 
appendix to the key data sets. <coughs> Any other members with questions? Yeah, of course you can go. Uh, again, for the cabinet member responsible for governance and finance, Councillor Barry, can you tell us um, the increase in the revenue settlement grant that this authority has received from Welsh Government over the last five years, please? Not off the top of my head, Councillor. OK. But we can get that information to you. I, I can provide it for you. Oh, there we go. The local authority has received an additional 30% in funding from Welsh Government over the last five years. We've gone from just over 91 million in funding from Welsh Government in 2019-20 to 118.5 million for the next financial year. That's an increase of 27.5 million in five years. Prior to that, we had eight consecutive years of negative settlements from Welsh Government. Those were during the years, negative settlements from Welsh Government during the years of austerity imposed by the UK Coalition Government. I mean, statistics and damn statistics, as they say. Um, look, it's, it's relative, isn't it? To I've outlined the position on pan wheels. It doesn't change the fact that Labour Welsh Government are providing higher settlements to the more affluent authorities in Wales. And I, I'm not quite sure what you're trying to justify, but this is an authority that's got the second highest council tax and has got some of the highest deprivation levels in Wales. And you're questioning seems to indicate that you're not willing to accept that as a socialist Welsh government, you don't appear, and the black and white figures would testify it, you do not appear to be supporting those most deprived areas in Wales. And as a Labour Party, I can't believe that you're not accepting that, because that's where we are today. We are 18th out of 22. 18th out of 22. And those data sets are not doing us justice. And it's in Welsh Government's gift to change those data sets. And they do, they do not change them. Thank you, Councillor Barry. Um, Councillor Michelle Jones, did, did you want to come in? Um, I was just going to ask Councillor Lewis. Obviously, he's got the MIRF figures in front of him. Did we have Cardiff's figures for the last five years? Cardiff's figures. No, obviously they're going to be substantially higher because of the difference in, in population. Because of the difference in population, but you know, you know, it's not relative to to the figures for for Merthyr Any other members with oh, Councillor Clive Jones? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I want to ask a general question. And because the figures we've got there, a great deal of it relates to the high inflation that we've got at this moment in time, which is 10.7%. Um, can I ask either Steve or, or Andrew, um, after April, what do we think is going to be the likeliest inflation figures um, some time, perhaps, in the summer months, or even later on in the year. What's it likely to be anticipated, um, as far as you're concerned? I, I'll take that, if that's right, Ms. Mayor. Um, the, the, there are various uh, measures of inflation. There's the Consumer Price Index and the Retail Price Index, um, which is which is a slightly broader definition, but all government um, <coughs> policies and financial policies are based on the um, the OBR, the, the Office for Budget Responsibilities figures under the CPI measure. Um, they fall away to about half, well, less than half of where they are at the moment in the next 12 months. 
and they fall away to negative figures in two and three years time. Now, you'll know that the consumer price index is a mean figure. We've spoken previously about uh, inflationary figures when it comes to um, construction, which are way, way above what the 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 the, the price uh, the consumer price index would indicate. So it does vary. But Councillor Jones makes an excellent point. He makes the point of we cannot just take a, a, a figure from last November and project it for practically 18 months. We have to be more accurate and, and, and he's absolutely right to raise it because the, the, the problem with not having accurate figures from an inflationary perspective is it brings us to a conclusion, as we will see later on, of a 188 left letter going to the trade unions. So we have to be accurate. We have to make sure that when we put proposals together and we are saying this is the figure, we have to be sure that those figures are accurate. Now, I've brought this to Steve's attention. The accountants are going back and working through the figures again, Steve, to make sure we get it as accurately as, as, as we possibly can. But your point is well made, Councillor Jones. Yeah, thank you, um, Mr Mayor, and thank you, uh, Councillor Barry. Um, thank you for the answer, because by the time we come to the Special Council to determine the budget, I think we definitely need to have a very, very good idea of what the inflation rate is going to be anticipated, because it may well affect the figures in the budget by the time we come to the um, the budget time in, I think, is it early March? Is that correct? Okay, have we got questions, anyone? No more questions. We'll go to comments from members. Councillor Anna Williams Price. Thank you. The table within the report which places Merthyr Tidville at 18th in Wales relates to the percentage differences in settlements as to compared to the previous year. Members will already be aware from the statement of accounts which details settlements received since 2006-2007 that this is the highest percentage increase since 2006-2007. So for the biggest increase for 15 years or more, more than double that was anticipated as we were anticipating a 3.5 projected increase. Um, so I think it's clear that the Welsh Government does prioritise our vital local government services and ensuring that they are properly funded. However, the UK Government's um, mismanagement of the UK economy has resulted in an 8.1% decrease in Welsh Government funding. So it's clear to me that the decisions made by successive UK governments have undoubtedly created the conditions for this unprecedented crisis, which continues to impact our local authority finances, and more importantly, the household finances of residents within our communities in Merthyr Tydfil. However, if you look at the um, picture on a per capita basis, you will see from 4.1 of this report that Merthyr Tydfil is second on a per capita basis, second only to Blaen and Gwent, who Councillor Member Andrew Barry mentioned in his opening comments. My priority at this time is ensuring that as far as possible, no additional burden is placed on to our residents as a result of Tory bus management in Westminster. Thank you, Councillor Price. Councillor Gary Thomas. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, just picking up on some of the questions, really, and answers that were given um, earlier. Um, through decarbonisation, you know, we've managed to get a real good grant from the Cardiff Capital Region uh, for a waste depot. Um, and I think it, I think Judith can confirm it's about seven hundred thousand pounds. Judith, it was um, to put the infra infrastructure in for electric vehicle charging there. So I think that's a very positive start. But as we know, it's a long way to go, and it's a team Merthyr effort. We all have to play our part. Every building, um, every school, everyone to reduce our energy uh, budgets going forward. So I like to I put that on the record. And secondly, um, you know, we, we've talked a lot here about you know banging back and forth between UK and Welsh government. 
our funding comes from Welsh Government. Simple as. That, that's who we go to. That's who we meet with. So, you know, it's they give us the money. It's a devolved uh, country. And I believe, you know, we must speak to our government. And that is our government, which is uh, Cardiff, the Senate in um, Cardiff Bay. So just want to put on record as well, uh, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Thomas. Councillor Clive Jones. Well, I understand what the leaders just said about devolved government, but it's a plain fact that the the money comes from Whitehall, from the UK government, from a Tory government. And they, Mr Mayor, have been, uh, the way that they've dealt with the economy in certainly in the last um, nine months has been a total disaster. With everything that's happening, with um, fuel prices going through the roof, energy prices going through the roof, inflation, cost of living gone up. <coughs> and then they selected what they thought was going to be the financial guru that was going to solve the financial problems in the UK, UK government. One named Liz Truss. And she was an absolute and disaster. And the figures I've seen vary between 48 billion pounds to 57 billion pounds, which had an added effect on the economy. Now, you can't get away from those figures. That's why we're in this really, that is the real reason why we're in the situation in public, the public sector throughout the, the country, including the National Health Service and lo the local government. I've never seen a situation like this. And the finger is pointed and has been pointing to 10 Downing Street. So we can't get away from the fact that the money tree is there in 10 Downing Street. And what's happening at this time for every local authority is the most serious that I can ever remember. So you, you can point the finger as the independents that seem to be doing all the time at the Welsh Government, but the, the amount of money has always been, and we, as far as I can see, will always be determined by the UK government, and they are to blame. Thank you, Councillor Jones. Councillor Brent Carter. Yep, th thanks, Mr Mayor. Um, I wasn't going to talk tonight, unfortunately. I'm not used to public speaking, but hey ho, I think I, I think I needed to say a little something, just to counter, counter what Councillor Barry is talking about, I suppose. Uh, Mr. Mayor, it's it's easy for Councillor Barry to play party politics with settlements and Welsh government, etc. But just to remind Councillor Barry, he took great pleasure in telling all and sundry that, in, that he saved the authority in 2017 from a black hole of £20 million left by the previous Labour administration. Just to remind Councillor Barry, just in case he doesn't remember, Every year, we've got to set a balanced budget. So where there's £20 million deficit, we have to find, I don't know. It's not easy when we've got to face difficult decisions. I've been there myself back in 2012 as a cabinet member of social services when difficult decisions had to be made. And I'm talking about closure of two care homes, taking the Meals on Wheels service off the table. It's not an easy place to be. But unfortunately, Andrew, Andrew Councillor Barry, this is the real world and harsh reality of local government. We had it easy from 2017 to 2020-22. Now difficult decisions have got to be made, so good luck with that. Thank you. Councillor Carter. Uh, Councillor Gareth Lewis. Funding received from Welsh Government, the independent group who control this local authority continue to bite the hand that, it feed, that feeds it. Over the last five years, there's been an increase to the revenue settlement grant of over 30% from Welsh Government, from just over 91 million in 2019-20 to 118.5 million for the next financial year, an increase of 27.5 million. 
This compares to an actual decrease in funding for eight consecutive years prior to this period during the years of austerity imposed by the, end, the then UK coalition government. It was as recent as November 2021, just 14 months ago, that the independent lead group of councillors were waxing that the council was apparently in the strongest financial position in decades. And despite a rate of the, rate, the highest inflation rate in 40 years, unprecedented increases in the cost of energy and a cost of living crisis, residents, council employees and head teachers will rightly find it difficult to comprehend that the council has gone from its strongest financial position in decades to being asked to accept significant cuts to council services within 14 months of this statement. Words matter to the people we represent and the in independent group must stop making sweeping and unsubstantiated claims that when scrutinised, do not hold up. In criticising Welsh Government, the independent group is back in the wrong horse. 82% of its budget comes directly from the UK Government, and Welsh Government is not in the same position as UK Government, where it suddenly can borrow large amounts of additional money to quickly address very challenging issues caused by inflation and other pressures. There does need to be a realignment of the funding formula for local councils, but that needs to start at Westminster with reform of the Barnet formula. Yeah. And it needs to be on a needs basis that will benefit economically deprived local authorities such as our, ourselves. It's absolutely outrageous that HS2 was classed as an England and Wales project, where not a single bit of new track is being laid in Wales. If it was classed as an England only project, Wales would benefit from funding of approximately four to five billion. This is a funding crisis made in Downing Street by the Tory government. The UK is on the brink of a recession and forecast to have the <coughs> slowest economic growth of, of any major advanced economy. The Tories gambled on the economy, created mayhem in the financial markets, and pushed up mortgage costs, whilst, whilst public services are being starved of funding. The impact of this crisis could be worse than the decade of austerity we experienced here. It's been called in some quarters austerity on steroids, and inevitably the council will be forced into making incredibly difficult choices. The opposition Labour group will scrutinise, challenge, and where appropriate, oppose these decisions and continue to stand up for the people of Merthyr Tidville. Gareth, you finished? Yeah. Uh, Councillor Darren Roberts. Yeah, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, my comment is going to be a little bit shorter than uh, Councillor Lewis's, but I think he was spot on with his appraisal, uh, quite frankly. Um, we've, under, we've gone through 13 years of Tory austerity, which has, quite frankly, decimated public services. Um, off the back of that, you know, it's going to be very, very difficult for Merthyr Tidville or other local authorities throughout Wales to recover. Um, the past six years, Merthyr Tidville County Borough Council has received uh, positive settlements year on year, which, as Gareth um, quite rightly pointed out, between 2012 and 2017 didn't happen under the Labour administration where we had year on year negative settlements. So everything is relevant. Everything needs to be put into the mix, but we really can't lay the blame at Welsh Government on this. The, the, the blame has quite rightly got to be at the, laid at the feet of the Tory uh, Government in Westminster. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Roberts. Anybody else with comments? No, nobody's indicating. Um, so can we put this to the vote then, please, Monitor Officer? Thank you, monitoring officer. OK, agenda item number five, new constitution to reports 
sorry, to consider the report of the chief executive. The cabinet member for governance and resources, Councillor Andrew Barry, will be presenting this report. My name is Mayor. Uh, the new constitution, the, there have been many discussions on, on this report. Um, we know that this constitution needs to change. It's been in place for 22 years. Um, we, we've, we've seen the rationale. We've had, um, we've, we've had a workshop on it. I don't think it was, it was more of a, a breakneck speed tr journey through what was in the, the, uh, New constitution, rather than any engagement by uh, members, and I think there's a commonality in what's being said by both sides of this chamber in terms of we just dis just feel a little disengaged from the process. It seems like it's carrying us rather than us being involved. Um, so at this stage, Mr. Mayor, we're, we're minded to defer, but I want to take a comment, if that's okay, from uh, the monitoring officer, and then if we can have. Um, possibly uh, the leader of the opposition and, and, and Gering to, to speak as leader of uh, the council, and we'll 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 go from from there. Is that okay? Um. Um, yes, to the extent that I can add anything uh, in in light of what I understand is the will of pretty much universally the members. Um, just to remind you that it is part of the RTI plan that we would update the constitution. It is also uh, something that's been monitored by our regulators who have been expecting us to achieve this over the course of the last few years. Um, I understand that you want to defer it this evening and therefore there's probably very little I can add to that. Councillor Garen Thomas. Um, myself and Councillor Barry met with um, Councillor Roberts yesterday evening. Um, we had a discussion on it. Um, there were quite a few um, points that, that were raised, and I think we need the clarification on going forward. So I think um, I know the um, Constitution is going to scrutiny, and there's some training as well, but I think we'll have to bring it back to Council as soon as possible. So. It fits into the RTI plan going forward, um, so we don't really want to. I think if we defer it, how long can we defer it for, uh, modern officer? Well, that's a matter for you. You you would need to decide how long you want to defer it for. Um, if you want to defer it until the training sessions that I had planned are going to take place, you will be deferring it probably until about September, um, because you will have. A great deal of work to do around the budget, so you're unlikely to have time for training sessions much before June, I would have thought. Can I suggest then, if agreement with um, Councillor Roberts, that we have a discussion um, outside of the chamber, um, perhaps this week or early next week, with yourself um, to draw up a plan um, of, and go from there. So we won't put a date on it tonight, but just defer it for this evening. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Leader. Um, as um, the Leader mentioned, um, I met with uh, himself and Council Barry yesterday evening. Um, we give this a, a good airing. Um, obviously, I, I gave my opinion and um, the opinion of some of the members of my uh, Labour group. It's fair to say that the Constitution um, is outdated. Um, like anything, you know, we, you know, move with the times and the world is a far different place that we're living in today than what we were sort of 20, 22 years ago. And we need a constitution that's uh, fit for purpose for a current progressive council that we uh, strive to become. So I welcome the deferment of the agenda item. Um, I'd like to bring it back as quickly as possible, but I'm mindful of the fact that it needs to go through scrutiny, go through all the right channels, and we need to have the, the correct uh, member engagement workshops so that we can um, get to the finer detail of it then and not just in one session where we have a, a whistle stop uh, presentation we need to get into it so it'll probably be several um, looking at the monitoring officer here we'll probably have several sessions to go through it rather than just one or two so um, yeah I welcome the deferment on this and as for uh, a date 
when the time is right and when members are happy to bring it back that uh, doesn't really contradict the plans of the RTA plan. That's that's my uh, opinion. Thank you, Leader. Thank you, Councillor Roberts. Councillor Clive Jones. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I wouldn't let this opportunity go without uh, referring to the uh, session that uh, some members attended in December. It was about nine or ten days before Christmas. I couldn't make it. I understand there were a number of members that weren't able to be present there. Um, the session was very detailed. We, as all 30 members, need to own this document and to be quite crystal clear where the changes are going to be replaced. And we need to have that pointed out to us um, so that we don't find it out when, you know, in some months time or years time, we need to refer to that part of the Constitution. So until and unless all the workshops and all the questions have been answered by the members, it should not come back to Council. We should be crystal clear when it comes back to Council that all 30 of us know what the changes are and understand them. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Clive Jones. So just to clarify, uh, Councillor Gary Thomas and Councillor Darren Roberts are going to meet with the monitoring officer um, to discuss uh, training dates and, and workshops and then come back to their respective parties to um, to discuss uh, w when it's going to come forward. Yeah. OK, thank you very much, everyone. Oh, Councillor Andrew Barry. Officially defer that then. Um, so it's not going to be taken forward. Yeah. Thank you very much, Councillor Andrew Barry. Um, agenda item number six, adoption of council tax reduction scheme for the financial year 2023-2024 to consider the report of the chief executive. The cabinet member for governance and resources, Councillor Andrew Barry, will be, will be presenting and moving this report. So, thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, so, adoption of the council tax reduction scheme for the financial year 23-24. Uh, longer standing members will recognise the council tax uh, reduction scheme uh, as an annual requirement a requirement to be brought to full council under legislation. Um, there is limited discretion for uh, and, and the proposal is to leave the discretions uh, adopted in previous years, uh, those being a four week extended period uh, after returning to work, disregarding war disablement pension and war widows pension when calculating calculating income uh, and our ability to backdate claims. Uh, there are some financial implications outlined of 4.1. However, the recommendation of 2.1 is the adoption of a council tax reduction scheme to commence in April 2023 under the requirements of the prescribed requirement regulations uh, for the 2023-24 financial year be approved. I move, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Andrew Barry. Do we have a seconder for this agenda item? Councillor Julia Jenkins. I'd like to second that, please, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor. Any questions from members? Nobody indicating. Any comments from members? Nobody indicating. Can we take this to the vote then, please, Managing Officer? Thank you, Monitor Officer. Agenda item number seven, issuing of a section 188 letter to trades unions to consider the report of the Chief Executive. The Cabinet Member for Governance and Resources, Councillor Andrew Barry, will be presenting and moving this report. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Issuing of the section 188 letter to trade unions, the report Mr Mayor, no one wants to bring or see, uh, but this report seeks formal approval from Council this evening uh, for the issuing of a Section 188 notice to trade unions to start a 45-day consultation exercise to identify how to make savings. The report indicates uh, as the earlier revenue budget 23-24 report outlined a significant deficit to be overcome because of world, national, regional, local pressures have built up uh, that by now we're all only too acutely aware of. Uh, the logistics 
<coughs> what is required as set out within section three and how our staff will be affected <coughs> at section four. The complexities and consequences uh, of needing to achieve the changes and timeline is highlighted within the table at section uh, five, page 70 of your papers. Uh, Mr. Mayor, let me guarantee you one thing. We will continue to review this authority's ever-evolving financial position. And if we can avoid redundancies in any way, we will avoid them by whatever means necessary. Uh, our priority is the service provision to the residents of this town and the residents of Merthyr Tidville. Um, this report starts a very difficult process uh, for everyone involved. Um, so we will be questioning uh, and querying at every turn until we are satisfied as members of this chamber that no more can be done. Um, we have, uh, do we have Hannah with us today? Yeah, there we are. Uh, should we have any questions? The recommendations are 2.1, 2.3, consultations uh, with the recognised trade unions be approved. 2.2, the issuing of a 188 letter on the 11th of January 2023, which is attached to Appendix 1, um, so as to legally protect the Council, be approved. 2.3, the notification of the Secretary of State for Business, Energy and Industrial Strategy on form HR1 of the potential 100 voluntary redundancies, stroke compulsory redundancies, be approved. I move, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Andrew Barry. Do we have a seconder for this agenda item? Um, I'll second the, um, the report, Mr Mayor, and in doing so, um, I just want to put on record again, you know, how disappointed we are having to do this. Um, after all the hard work that's gone in over the last few years from both sides of the house, um, through the recovery and transformation plan, where we've really, you know, built back up our our our, our employment side of the of the council, and now we've got to take these steps. So it is disappointing to bring it, but I move it, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Gary Thomas. Um, do you have any questions from members, Councillor Clive Jones? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, it's in relation to the proposed letter. It's going to be sent to staff. Um, got a few questions. On the first page and the first full paragraph, um, can I have an answer to my question as to why pay award is in singular, not plural? And there's no mention in there of, I know they're talking about contractual costs and so on, but there's no mention in there about high inflation currently at 10.7 percent um and i think that should be in there and also there is a correction because it refers um on both sides of the um, first page to 11.5 million deficit so that's clearly uh it might have been right at the time that this was put together but it's not correct now Sorry, Councillor Jones. Yeah, the examples um, given within the letter. Um, so just to clarify, the letter is for the trade unions. Um, so there were some examples given um, around the 11.5 million, which, um, as you as you said, when we had the um, settlement was was the figure. And I know Steve has been working on that since uh, since the report has been published. So um, we can make that change to uh, the 11.3. Um, and yeah, in terms of um, the inflationary cost, obviously we've discussed this evening um, all the contributing factors to um, the revenue budget, um, which is, has been taken into account as to why we have to uh, issue the section 188. But is it your intention through you, Mr. Mayor, to refer to it as a awards? Because it was, it, we were on, it isn't just one, pay award and are you going to mention the current inflation figure because 
I think that's very important to bring to the attention of the, the staff. Yes, Councillor Jones, we can uh, look to make that amendment um, before we issue to the trade unions if it's approved. I've got um, some other questions um, and it's in relation to the agency workers, page 79 and 80. There's about 65 employees posts referred to there. Um, can you explain to me why we've got an assistant engineer who was an agency worker and an occupational health member of staff? Is it because um, there is not a dearth of these and the, the, the pool of uh, engineers or occupational health qualified staff is not out, th out there? Um, I was a bit surprised to say the least, to say that they were amongst um, these here. And also um, at the bottom of page 79, it refers to lifeline operators. Um, for me, they're extremely important members of staff, um, but they're down here as, as agency workers. And, and can you also confirm, Hannah, that agency staff per employee costs more to the authority than permanent staff? Yeah, if I can just respond on the uh, engineering role, Councillor Jones. Yeah, that's an agency role because there isn't uh, enough skill set out there. It's actually a funded role from Welsh Government in relation to the 20 mile an hour work that we're undertaking. So it's a two year post. Um, we weren't able to fill it other than with agency. Uh, in relation to the OC Health role, um, it was a temporary um, role for three weeks. Um, we had um, some slight um, sort of uh, it, uh, administration work that was required um, to be done. Um, so we needed just a temporary, so that um, that role is no longer there. That was just uh, um, with effect from the date that the, the data was published. Uh, in relation to Lifeline, um, I believe that they've needed some temporary um, cover as well. As you mentioned, it's a critical role. Um, so we've had to look at um, temporary agency costs um, uh, for, for that particular area. Uh, in terms of the overall cost for agency versus permanent staff, obviously we don't have to pay any of the sort of on costs with, with agency. Um, so sometimes it can be a cheaper option. Again, each sort of agency uh, role is um, needs to be considered within its own um, sort of case really um, as to the reason as to why we're using agency for certain posts. Can I suggest, Mr. Mayor, in the future when we get uh, copies of these, that if there are temporary staff, because otherwise I would have understood why it's in there. Because if we have somebody there who's been appointed for a few weeks or a few months, I could understand. But I've taken it that they were, you know, permanent agency long term. Yeah, thanks. Councillor Clive Jones, anybody? Any other members with questions? None indicating any members with comments. Councillor Clive. Oh, sorry, Councillor Anna Williams Price. Thank you. I just wanted to take the opportunity to put on record and express my solidarity with my colleagues within the trade union movement. Um, obviously, this is not uh, never. Uh, easy time when facing uncertainty in um, employment, um, but I continue to work with the trade unions to ensure that this is the start of a process which provides meaning, meaningful consultation for staff. Thank you, Councillor Price. Councillor Clive Jones. We're in difficult times, there's no doubt about that. Um, and the number of agency staff workers um, will, at one time, quite a list. I know there's work being carried out um, by officers to reduce this figure, but there are approximately 65 members of staff on this sheet of paper who are classified as agency staff. And I think we need to really look at those um, posts before we certainly consider um, 
whether we're going to make in hopefully not people redundant. I understand that uh, at least one of these members of staff, and there may be more, has been with the authority for 10 years. So, you know, it may be the choice of that individual, but, you know, there is an ongoing cost uh, to the authority. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Jones. Councillor Darren Roberts. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, like several members in the chamber here this evening, um, I've attended a council meeting previously where a report like this has come forward issuing a section 188 letter to the trade unions. Quite frankly, I had hoped that we would not see it again um, during my time as a councillor, but here we are. Um, unfortunately, we've seen it here this evening, so I just wanted to put that on record. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Roberts. Any other members with comments? Okay, none indicating. Can we take this to the vote then, please, Monitor Officer? Monitoring Officer. Okay, agenda item number eight. To cons oh. Update to Renewals Policy and Disabled Facilities Grant update to consider the report of the Deputy Chief Executive. The Council Leader and Cabinet Member for Housing Regeneration, Councillor Gary Thomas, will be presenting and moving this report. Thank you, Mr Mayor. The report briefly describes the background of a disability facility grants, the DFG service, and the increasing pressures on the limited available budget, with rising demands and increased cost of, ad of adaptations. The report will outline the key policy changes suggested to meet the growing demands on the service in a fair and equitable way, subject to biannual reviews. Recommendation 2.1 is the proposed amendments to the renewals policy be implemented with immediate effect, that any new approvals be undertaken in line with the policy revisions be approved. I so move, Chair. And can I say that we've got Susan Lewis Abbott here today and obviously Annie Owen as well to ask you know, to answer any technical questions. Thank you, Councillor Gary Thomas. Do we have a seconder for this agenda item? Councillor Michelle Simmons. Yes, I second the report, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor. Any members with questions? Councillor Clive Jones. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, my question's on page 85, paragraph 5.2. Um, where he refers to the figure um, of all DFGs in excess of £36,000. The question I want to ask, is that figure determined by the Welsh Government or is it within the gift of local authorities to amend that? Because I seem to remember that figure has been there for some time and sim simply doesn't appear to have taken inflation and other rising costs into account. Uh, yeah, Councillor, I, I can answer that question. So the £36,000 mandatory figure for DFGs are set by Welsh Government and hasn't changed for a number of years. Thank you, Councillor Clive Jones. Councillor David Hughes. In 3.8, uh, page 84, the additional cost of 691,000, which was given to Mirtha Valley Homes, which, um, which is used then to do um, adaptations to the housing stock. Can I ask that we uh, be assured that once these improvements are done to the houses, that no additional rent is uh, put on the Tenants. Uh, yeah, there's no change in rent for the adaptations required in each property with the social landlord. Okay. Any other members with questions? Nobody in. That's for Kevin Gibbs. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, in 
Following on from uh, Councillor Jones's question regarding the 36,000 from Welsh Government, isn't it within the, the power of the local authorities to provide the DFGs over and above 36,000? Uh, local authorities can choose to have discretionary funding. Some local authorities chose to do as we did in 2018. Um, some didn't and still don't, uh, many of whom are revisiting that due to the rising costs and uh, unprecedented demands on the service. So just to, so just to be clear, we are we are we do provide discretionary over and above in most table. We currently do, yeah. Councillor yeah. Gibbs. Um, any anybody else with questions? Okay, nobody indicating. Any members with comments? Councillor Lisa Mitten. The team uh, set out in 3.5. It talks about the arrangements being monitored by multi-agency meetings. And um, recently, the rapid response that I had when I had a DFG uh, query before Christmas, um, and really um, thanking the team for then relaying it back to the um, person in question, because there was a bit of misunderstanding from a third party, shall I say, that oh, it was the council hasn't got any money. It wasn't. We were waiting for some works actually from Welsh Water to be done. So you know. Know, it was a bit of misinformation there and hence why they got in touch with me to say well you know can, can you sort of help us with this so I really just wanted to set out that thanks to the team I had a very quick response from Kane Repair from Susan the team and and everybody as well um I think I think the only one um addition I'd have to that is just when they're having those bi-monthly meetings it's just really holding the RSLs to account and I don't mean that in any derogatory fashion but in this particular case it was with one of our RSLs and it was just chasing up that you know third party which is um, Welsh Water should we say so just keeping an eye on that and really holding them to account for those timelines because our team, COTS, et cetera, have done all the initial work, even with all of these delays, and, and then we hand it over to somebody else, but it still reflects on us where it wasn't actually um, still with us. So, yeah, thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you, Councillor Mitten. Uh, Councillor Geraint Thomas, and this will close the debate. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I, I think that's 36,000 thousand pound figure though i think it's one i think we've must when we speak to the um the housing minister that we should challenge especially because we mentioned the inflationary prices at this moment in time thirty six thousand pound isn't going to get a lot um to do so i think that's something we will pick up i think at some of the wlj meetings uh councillor jones uh, i think that was a great point um obviously we've gone through a difficult time through covid trying to get all these adaptations done and spend the dfg budget and I've got to take my hat off to the team, the COTS and the housing team as well, and everybody involved that's really caught up now. We're in a good place at this moment in time. So uh, can I just thank you all for your, your great work? Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Garen Thomas. Uh, can we take this to the vote then, please, monitoring officer? Thank you, monitoring officer. OK, just before we go on to uh, this agenda item, I'd like to um, mention something because we are going on to biodiversity. Uh, the chief officer of, of neighbourhood services, Judith Jones, has left the Nature Isn't Neat brochure for all for all councillors, which was produced by the countryside team and will explain about the council's biodiversity initiatives. Um, Welsh language versions will be available from Gillian Hampson um, and it will also be available on the council website. OK, um, thank you very much for that, Judith. Agenda item number nine, Environment Wales Act 2016, part one, section six, the biodiversity and resilience of ecosystems duty report, December 2022, to consider report of the chief officer for neighbourhood services. The cabinet member for neighbourhood services, Councillor David Hughes, will be presenting and moving this report. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, by diversity resilient of ecosystems duty report 2022 details the action undertaken by Musitville County by the Council in relation to section six under the part one of the Environmental Wales Act 2016. 
Welsh Government requires the document to be produced by the end of 2022. The document introduced Section 6 to describe some highlight key outcomes and issues and, ex and explores the six object objectives found within the Nature Recovery Action Plan for Wales, all in the context of Mercer Tidville County Borough Council. The document ends with a short statement regarding production of the next S6 report due to end in 2025. Other areas touched upon within this document include green infrastructure assessment and strategy, and the area statements recently produced by Natural Resources Wales. Uh, two, point, uh, two of the recommendations, the Biodiversity Resilient and Ecosystem Duty Report of 2022 be approved before uh, we go on to questions. Um, I'd just like to thank Matt and the team, very small team. Uh, we went to add this in our um, scrutiny. And if you've seen the amount of work these three people are doing, it's, uh, it's a credit to them. So I'd just like to be put on record of that. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hughes. Do we have a second for this agenda item? Councillor Michelle Jones. Happy to second this, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Jones. Do we have any questions from members? Councillor Gawain Thomas. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, obviously, this this um, report, the duty report, has come into play now in 2022. Now, obviously, we set out the LDP um, in the 20, in the, up to 2030. In, because this duty is upon us now, will that alter the LDP in that time frame, in, in that eight years, or not on, on things that we could, like land we can build on, etc.? That's a general open question there, Julie. Thanks, Leader. Um, yeah, this was taken into account in the writing of the current LDP because this um, duty came into being in the tw in 2016. So it's a plan that we are required to um, review every three years. So, yeah, it, it's fully taken account of in the current LDP, and then as we move to review the new one, we will be um, integrating this into that. Any other questions from members? Nobody indicating any comments from members? Nobody indicating, can we take this to the vote then please, Monarchic Officer? Thank you, Monitoring Officer. Agenda item number 10, Flying Start Expansion Phase 2, Access to Free Childcare. To consider the report of the Chief Officer for Social Services, the Cabinet Member for Social Services, Councillor Julia Jenkins, will be presenting moving this report. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, the Flying Start Expansion Phase 2, Access to Free Childcare. Report authors, Chris Hall and Sarah Alster. And Chris Hall is here uh, this evening for any further questions. Uh, the summary report. The purpose of this report is to agree the ex expansion of flying start services across the county borough. This will provide an additional 88 children aged 2 to 3 with access to free childcare each year from the proposed lower super output areas. However, these children and their families will not benefit from the full flying start programme due to the approach taken by Welsh Government to this phase of the expansion. Members should note that this expansion by Welsh Government does not enable access to the care of the wider services of Flying Start and only funds childcare costs. Therefore, there will be pressures in the areas such as enhanced support budgets as the year progressive, given the number of children experience developmental delays partly due to the COVID pandemic. Whilst the approach has followed the priorities as set out in Appendix A, one area has been included due to the high number of children living in poverty in comparison to other areas. This approach will also free into capacity the outreach approach for non flying start areas as some vulnerable families living in the expansion postcodes will already be enrolled in flying start. On agreement of this report, 24 of the 36 lower super output areas across Merthyr Tidville will have access to free childcare for two to three year olds. 
Welsh Government have also informed the local authority that a further expansion will be required within 2023 for an additional 76 childcare places. The recommendations are 2.1. The expansion proposal set out in 5.7 and 5.8 be approved and the expansion plan required by Welsh Government Appendix D be submitted. And then recommendation 2.2. The outline capital development priorities the childcare submitted to Welsh Government with full proposals being brought back to Council for approval in partnership with education. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Jenkins. Uh, do we have a seconder for this agenda item? Councillor Michelle Jones. Happy to second the report. Thank you, Councillor Jones. Any questions from members? Councillor Louise Minot Fox. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. My question is for the Cabinet member, Julia Jenkins. Can you explain a bit more about the barriers that have been in the development of the required workforce and what is being done to overcome these to ensure that the workforce remains sustainable? Paul, please. Yeah, thank, thanks for the question, Councillor. Um, we've been working uh, continually now at the moment with, um, with the College looking at the recruitment into the sector and developing a workforce development plan bespoke to childcare in order that we get a better understanding of why people are leaving childcare provision. We know it's considered a fairly poorly paid um, and not very of, uh, not often full time for, for, for uh, parents in terms of their employment. And it's recognised as nationally as well as a, a problem in terms of the recruitment and the speed of recruitment that's going to need to take place in terms of the expansion of childcare. Um, but we continue to work with the college and understand better how we can support people to stay within the sector and train people up because we often, through Welsh Government funding, are able to do provide all of the training um, and qualifications profile that is necessary in order for them to work within the sector. The difficulty within the sector is they're not counted as a member of staff unless they have full qualifications. So um, putting people in on placement doesn't solve some of our recruitment issues, if you like. Um, but we continue to work with the employment teams around how we can recruit into the sector um, and get that um, the numbers we're going to need going forward, because we believe that is going to be a significant challenge, as is going to be if we have to open a whole uh, a number of new provisions actually having organisations willing to take those on as independent businesses or as third sector voluntary organisations. Any other questions from members? Councillor Judy Scriven. Thank you, Mr Mayor. It's, it's just a, a quick question and it's more for clarity on further reports that come down the line. When we get these reports in the future, can we get the LSOA maps as perhaps an agenda supplement or just in the report? I know we've had them before, but I just now read the report. I, I was trying to look for the maps again to remind myself where the areas were referring to. Just be handy to have them with the reports that come in so we can, they're right there for, for reference. Thank you. Yeah, we'll endeavour to try to do that. The the LSOAs have actually all been put on the community, uh, the councillor's hub, so that you can access them at any point in time because it allows you to expand them and be able to see them in greater detail. Actually printed on an A4 page like this would, would not allow you to see the street names, etc. So it becomes a fairly meaningless thing, but I'm, I'm happy to include them going forward. But there is access 24-7 for them on the councillor hub. Any other members with questions? OK, nobody indicating any comments from members. Nobody's indicating. Can we put this to the vote then, please, monitor officer? Thank you, monitoring officer. Agenda item number 11, Annual Equality Report 2021-2022. This is an information report. Agenda item number 13, ECO4, Flexible Eligibility Memorandum of Understanding and Joint Statement of Intent. This is an information report. Agenda item number 14, to deal with any other urgent business or correspondence. Um, on behalf of the local authority, may I take this opportunity to pass on our sincere condolences to Councillor Claire, Claire, Jones, Claire Jones 
on the death of her husband, Stephen. And just to say that our thoughts and prayers are with Claire at this very sad time. Agenda item number 15, to receive communications from their worship, the mayor. I've had none. Um, and just to say thank you very much for your attendance tonight. Um, and I formally declare this meeting closed. <laughs>